Hello everybody, welcome in and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Kathy Champion and I am an independent Stamping Up demonstrator here in Gastonia, North Carolina. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to say if you are new to my channel and have not yet subscribed, please hit that red button, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell and it will give you an option to be able to choose how you want to receive notifications and that way you won't miss any of my it in my upcoming videos um, and all of my friends and family uh, crafty my crafty family especially thank you once again I always want you to know that you are appreciated you are loved and I hold you all up in my prayers every day I love you very much and I want to thank you for tuning in once again uh, I do want to show you all the host code I usually start out with my uh, host code this will be in the description box below but for anyone that's not familiar with stamping up um, what this host code will, uh, will do if you use this and place a $50 order or more before shipping and, and tax then you will receive a free gift from me at the end of the month um, if you um, spend over hundred and fifty dollars do not use the host code uh, shoot me an email and let me know that you placed an order over hundred and fifty dollars and I'll still make sure that you do get the um, the free gift from me as a thank you but a hundred and fifty dollar order will assure that you get some stamping rewards which are actual dollars that you can spend back for more product so that's always a great thing to do I love it when I get stamping rewards so I thought I would throw that out there that host code will be in on the blog as well as in the description box below today we are going to work with this um, this set called kangaroo and company I love 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 this it is so cute it comes with coordinating dies the dies are absolutely precious um, the dies actually cut out the little pouch so that you can stick flowers hearts the baby um, envelopes the packages into her little pouch we have a party hat who doesn't love a little party animal <laughs> There are so many little sentiments on here that are tiny little sentiments that are perfect. Hopping by just to say hi. Thanks a bunch. And I think that's so cute with the bunch of flowers, bunch of hearts, bunch, bunch of gifts. Hello. Just a note. Hello, baby. Just for you. Love you, so, love you much. It's your day. You get a little sprig of glass, of grass, not glass, <laughs> grass, um, so that you can build a scene. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to build a scene on a card. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I have here is my card base and my mats. So, I have a crumb cake card stock that's 8.5 by 5.5, and, and I'm going to score it at 4 and 1 fourth, and I'll do that in just a moment. The other thing I have is Daffodil Delight, and I have the piece of white. Now, my Daffodil Delight is cut at 8 and 1 eight, I mean, 4 and 1 eighth by 5 and 3 eighths, and then this piece is going to layer over top of it, and this is what we're going to build our scene on, and this piece is going to, is at uh, 4 inches by 5 and 1 fourth. So, this is what we're going to start out with first. Um... Maybe not. Let's let's go ahead and stamp our kangaroo, and we will color our little kangaroos, and then we will go from there. Um, this is a beautiful little stamp set, and it's it's not a, a dinky stamp set at all. These are photopolymer. I am working on Whisper White because we all know any of us that are too, true and tried um, stamping up uh, fans. We know that nothing is as good as Whisper White when you are stamping with your Memento ink and coloring with your Stampin' Blends. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So this piece, I am going to load up my ink, my, um, stamp with my Memento ink. And I'm going to do it like this since it's a little bit larger stamp. Just to ensure that I'm getting even distribution of ink. And then we can put that back over there. I do have my stamp and pierce mat here because with the photopolymer you need some cushioning. And this assures that you get a nice 
even. And when I have a larger image, I will put a little pressure on it just to make sure that I'm getting that ink to the paper. And then pick it up. Beautiful image. And of course, y'all all know that I got my stamp and scrub, and I'm just going to leave it over here to the side. This is a stamp cleaner, and for anyone that's not familiar, this side here is your wet side. You have raindrops here that shows you this is your side for cleaning. You have a sunshine over here that says this is your drying side, and I always like to keep this right over here to my side so that as I stamp, I can clean my stamps off. And nothing I have seen yet cleans a stamp like a stamp and scrub. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, the next thing that I want to do is I want to get my little kangaroo, the one that's going to go into the... You have two little ones. You have this little bitty one that can sit beside Mama or in front of Mama. And then you have the little one that's out. I'll tell you what. No, I'm going to do what I had originally planned. I'm going to do the little one and show you how cute this sits in the pouch. I love this. So we are going to stamp this one. How about if we turn it and stamp this one right here? That would still give us room enough to cut out. And that way I'll be using up a lot of the space on my paper. So let's do this and stamp this one right about here. Very pretty. Back over to my cleaning pad, cover up my ink, and all cleaned up, and now we're going to color. All right, now I decided for my kangaroo, I want to use my dark petal pink for her front and her ears. I want Flirty Flamingo. And I think I'm going to go with the light Flirty Flamingo for her nose. And I want Crumb Cake for her body. And I'm using both the light and the dark. And I'm going to go in first with my Crumb Cake. And we are going to just color this. And as I have told you so many times, the uh, Stampin' Blend markers cannot be beat for coloring. They are flawless, especially if you use them on the Whisper White paper. This paper is just meant for these markers. Now I'm going to come up on that side of the ear and maybe a little bit right here. And I'm going to leave the center of that ear for pink. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And then I'm going to go up under here. And what I like to do is I like to color with all of my light. And then I will come back and I will shade with my darker color. And when I'm just coloring a large area, I'll just do little circles. The little circle seems to um, be the best way to color this. Um, now I will come over. Now you do want to be careful with your tips on your markers because these are these little brush tips. Oh, they color so pretty. So just um, continue to color. And this um, alcohol ink, as it dries, it will take on a different shade. So what you put down at first, it's when it as it dries and it evaporates, it's going to be lighter. So that's how I do that. And then we're going to come turn it this way. I like to turn my paper as I'm coloring. It's just how I like to do it. And I like to be careful because um, alcohol markers seem to um, spread out the ink once you put it to the paper. So when you get close to the line, just have a very delicate touch. But you will not get the bleeding 
on the whisper white paper that you get on um, some just some of the other paper. I have I've tested this and found it to be so true. You can see where it has started to dry and it's gotten lighter. So I'm just coming back with another coat. Look at her little feet. <laughs> Everybody knows a kangaroo does not have little feet, but aren't they precious? All right, so while that is drying a little bit, I'm going to see a place here that I missed. So while that's drying, I am going to take my petal pink. This is the dark. And I'm going to come up and I'm just going to touch right inside of her ears, just a little bit right there, and just a little bit right there. And then I want to come in here. Now this time I'm putting down the darker. And all I did was just kind of outline that. And I'm going to come back in with the lighter petal pink. And we are going to just blend it, blend it blend it and look how pretty that turns out so now I'm going to come back in with the darker crumb cake and what I want to do is I want to shadow places that I think would be a, sh a shadow and I think right here would be a shadow possibly right there maybe down there her arm Definitely where there's a, a line like that. Um, maybe right at the bottom, there's going to be some, some shadowing there. And then her feet. And a little bit right here around the tail. Now what you're going to do in order to fill this in, if you see how harsh those lines are, um, you see the harshness of the lines, we're going to go back in with the light crumb cake and we're going to blend this out. So I'm going to start up here. And go down just like that. And what you're doing is you're just pulling that color up into the lighter. Just like that. And then you're going to do the same thing here. Just kind of swirl it in. And once that starts to dry, you are going to see how it blends together so well, and you won't see those harsh lines anymore. that dry. I like to sometimes just take and fan it a little bit to let it dry out. And now I'm going to take my flirty flamingo and I'm going to come in and just touch her nose. Yeah, isn't that cute? So while I've got the flirty flamingo out, I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to go ahead and do the baby nose. And I want a darker shade for my um, my baby because you know babies are usually a little darker than mama. So I'm going to use my light soft suede, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come up here and do the ears. And then I'll come down and do his face. Little paws, 
I guess that's what you call a kangaroo's little hands. I assume it's like a dog or any other animal. They have paws rather than hands and feet. And this one I'm not going to shade. I'm just going to leave him all one color. I love that soft suede. I brought out both of those, but I'm not going to use them. I am going to come in with the um, the light petal pink. And I'm going to put just a little color right there for his ear. And then right here. And we're going to call them done. So now I'm going to bring the dies over. And the having the coordinating dies just makes everything so easy. Because now we can put that down and cut him out. And look at this little cut line right here. See the cut line right there? That's going to cut the pouch. Just a little slit. You know, I always tell everybody that Stampin' Up! thinks of everything. And they literally do. Because otherwise, we would have to take a craft knife and kind of try to get in there and cut that. Uh, sometimes having um, no success. And it, this takes all the guesswork out of it. And I love that. So we'll put that down there. And I love using these little post-it notes. We can't cut them both because they, I got them too close to each other. So we'll run this one through our die cut machine. And then we'll come back and cut the baby next. these off and we're going to stick them right there so we can put the baby one on there. Look at that. And there's your little slit already cut so we don't have to um, fidget with that. So now let's take the baby one and I'm going to turn him around so I can get him lined up just right. Just like that. And we'll run this one through. And this one I did get off a little bit, but I think it's still going to be okay. I like the fact that we have that little line right there, and I like to take a stylist. Let's see. We have stylus that goes on our take your pick tool. And this would be the perfect time to use one of these ends. The pick tool comes off, and then you can put one of these stylus tools in. And this is where I like to do this. Now you could take this to the scoreboard and do it. It's just as easy to do it like this. This is not necessary, but I found that this works really good for bending up that little piece. And when you stick this in the mama pouch, like this, you can fold that piece back and it just secures it. Just like that. And then what I like to do is just take a little piece of tape you can use washi tape, whatever kind of tape you got. I had scotch tape, but I think it fell off my desk, and it's over on the other side of my desk that I have not picked up yet. So I'm just going to use a little piece of washi. And we're going to put that down just like that, and that just holds that in place. And like I said, any kind of tape that you have. And there's our little kangaroo the mama and the baby, and look, this will actually kind of stick out like that, but when you mail it, if you put this in an in a envelope, it will lay flat, but then it can poke out like that so that it's 
kind of dimensional. I think you're seeing it. All right, I'm going to put my stamp and blends up. The other thing that we want to stamp and color is the flowers. Um, I went ahead and did these because I think that doing all of this on camera would be very, very, very time consuming. So I stamped out three of the bundles of, of flowers and went ahead and colored them different colors and those are going to be ready to go and um, I also did three of the little butterflies it has a little butterfly and look how tiny that is but not only does it stamp it it's got a die that cuts this out how stinking cute isn't that precious so I'm going to bring that up a little closer so you can see the detail pretty very pretty all right so I'm going to lay that over there I am going to put my pick back into my take your pick tool because that's the one I use the most and I'm going to put this back over here and the next thing that we're going to want to do is our grass so from our stamp set we're going to start building our scene. So in order to build our scene, I need my little piece of grass. I'm going to lay our little kangaroo right there, or maybe I'll just lay it all here. That way that it's all right there on that piece. The same with your dies. You do not want to lose a die either. I have lost both. Never to be found. And it's so frustrating. Okay. So now what I want to do is on this piece here, and we're going to be building our, I think I'm shedding. I went and got a haircut today, so that might be why I'm seeing some of my hair. Um, you know, every now and then we need a haircut. I'm putting this uh, protective mat over top of my stamp and Pierce, just so I don't get ink on anywhere I don't want it. So now that I've got my grass, let's make sure i got it going the right direction. Just like that. I'm going to bring in like at least two colors of ink. I am going to do the garden green. And I'm going to open these up and set them in front of me so that I can, you know, kind of wing what I'm doing, so to speak. Maybe we need to move this over here. I'd love to have both inks. I'm thinking maybe a shaded spruce. So now we've got both of our inks. And I'm going to come in with the garden green. And I'm going to stamp. And stamp. Then I'm going to go back in the middle and just stamp again. So I get that on and off color. And then I'm going to stamp and stamp. And then I'm going to stamp and stamp. And I think that's all I'm going to do with that one. I'm going to come back in now with the shaded spruce. And I'm going to fill in. Just a little bit. Just every little bit. So I think I want to come up and stamp a little bit more grass just ever so often. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to stamp here and maybe here. And see when stamping off you get that different variation of color. So let's do this one and we'll do here 
and there, and here, and here, and here. And I think that's all I'm going to do for the grass. So let's put these inks up. And now I'm going to take out my balmy glue. And this is one of the new um, blending brushes. And this brush is not dirty. It is stained because I've used this in my blue inks already. But what we want to do here is we're going to make a little bit of a blue sky by blending. And I'm going to zoom y'all in just a little bit. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to turn that slightly like that. And I'm going to load up my ink, I mean my brush. And I'm going to tap off over to the side just to get a little excess off. And I'm going to come in with a little swirly motion. And you want to just be very gentle as you're putting in your, putting down your ink. I want to come down just a little bit on the side of the card. And just smooth it out as you go. These brushes are so smooth and so easy to use. You will love them. You get three in a pack. Um, and they are outstanding. You really need one for each of your colors, like one for blues and one for your reds and pinks and one for your browns. And um, So, you know, you just probably about three sets of these would give you all that you need uh, for most any of your colors. And you could actually put a little um, sticky note or label on here to say what color family, but they're going to stain so you're going to know Fun. I love to ink blend. I'm just going to go across here like this. And that gives us a nice, pretty blue to our sky. And I don't think I want to do too much more than that because we're going to put a sun in the sky. Um, it just it just seemed like these kangaroos called for a um, a sunshine. So what I'm going to do to clean this up, I am going to lay this cloth down. This is just one of my cleaning cloths, and I'm going to take some of the stamp and, and dust. This is our stamp cleaner. And I'm just going to spray a little bit right there in the center of that cloth. And then I'm going to rub this brush in that cleaner. You can also take these to the sink um, with some soap and water and clean them up. But I find that this works, and it also gives me an opportunity to wipe off my little mat. So there we go. All nice and clean. And we can move this out of our way. So now let's bring this back over, because I'm thinking what I want to do is I want some of these flowers to be nestled into the grass. And so I think uh, nestling these flowers down in the grass, I want one to be down and one up. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this one up. So in order to do that, I'm just going to put a dimensional on the back, maybe two, just to kind of balance it out. So something like that and let's glue this one directly down and then see if you do that you can kind of nestle one kind of under the other let me get my 
take your pick tool and all I'm going to do is just lift off the backers and then of course glue it to my fingers <laughs> and now all I'm going to do is just lay that right there where it's kind of nestled in the grass now this one I'm just going to put some liquid glue on it and I'm going to glue this one just flat down Maybe nestle it just a tiny bit right about there. And of course now I've got sticky fingers. Alright, and this one I want to pop up, so I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals on it. Just like so. And this one's going to nestle right over here. Now we're ready for our kangaroo. And I thought she would be so cute right here. And we're going to pop her up as well so that her tail will sit up over the flowers. I think that will be cute. And uh, I don't know. She just looks like she needs to be popped up. Oh, we got to get her baby in. get the little baby kangaroo right there and I think what I'm going to do looks like the washi tape did not hold so you know what maybe washi tape's not the best thing to use so let's go ahead I did pick my um, my tape up it was laying over in the floor where it had fallen off but scotch tape I think will work much better and I'm just going to put a piece right there just to kind of hold that down. Yep, and then that doesn't show. There we go. And then the baby's still kind of dimensional. That's exactly what I wanted. All right, and so let's get a couple more dimensions on here. We're going to put one there and maybe one here. And one right down here at the bottom. And I think this will hold our little kangaroo just fine. Now all we're going to do is nestle her down right about there. Oh, I love that. Love it, love it, love it. Now, the one thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to put a sun in the sky. And to do that, I have a little piece of, uh, Daff I believe this is Daffodil Delight. Yeah, that's Daffodil Delight. I had to check uh, just to make sure. And I'm going to get my circle dies. And I'm just going to cut a little scalloped circle in my circles. Here we go. And I think what I'm going to do, well, you know, that one I think is going to, this one will work. I just want a little scalloped circle that has just a little bit of fringe around the edges. And I think the reason I wanted it like that, um, this is going to be a little sunshine up here in the sky. I was thinking about inking around it, but if I put yellow ink um, around that, over that blue, we are going to have a green. Um, it's going to look like the sun, the rays off of the sun are green. And <laughs> I don't think that that would look very appealing. So I kind of decided not to go in that direction. So there is our little sun. And we are going to pop that up on dimensionals as well, just to give it a little bit of an uh. You know, the dimensions and stuff that you put on your, your pieces really does make it um, come to life. 
So that's why I like to use my dimensionals. Now I'm going to put that sun up kind of high. And then we got our little butterflies, and I need some mini dimensionals. And I think that the mini ones might work on these butterflies. And if not, if they don't, then we will just have to cut them and make them work. Let's see. Yep, I think the minis are going to be perfect on these. And that way these can have, I'll say, some dimension. And we have three of them. So all, we, all I'm doing is just putting these little mini glue dots, not glue dots, I'm sorry, Stampin' Dimensionals. And these are tiny, so they might be a little... Oh, one stuck to me. <laughs> They might be a little tedious to work with, but hey, we're going to do it because we love little mini. Little mini things are always so cute. Alrighty, so I think I'm going to have one maybe over here. I'm gonna glue these to my table if I'm not if I'm not careful. I think we're gonna have one kind of coming down on this flower right here. And we're gonna have one that's flying way over here. No, I don't know, I don't want it there. I need to we need a place for our sentiments. So maybe this one's gonna be way up here. Okay, I love that. I think it's so cute. Now all we need is a sentiment on here. And I'm looking back at the stamp set, and I love this one that says, Hopping by just to say hi. And I think that's what we're going to, uh, what we're going to put on this one. Let's see how that's going to work. look over here. I have a little dish. This little dish means so much to me because um, my friend Krista, who passed away the end of uh, December, um, sent me uh, this little dish. And her and I both love dandelions. And it had dandelions and it said, if friends were flowers, I'd pick you. And um, she did pick me, and I felt so blessed that she did. All right, we got a couple of these little, oh, I love this one. Let's see if it'll fit on this one. I think, oh, yeah, that's the one. <gasps> these are the, I'm going to show this uh, die set. It cuts out a bunch of sentiments at one time, and it's really a great uh, little die set. Or you can just um, die cut the pieces like I did in different colors of paper and then you've always got um, a little piece for a, a sentiment. I, I do think I want to put this behind something of another color so I'm going to try to decide which way I want to do this but in the meantime we are going to stamp this. Stamp block. I don't think I need one quite that big. Um, just as a rule of thumb, you will have a much better experience with your stamping if you find a stamp block that better suits the size of your stamp. So always try to find a stamp set that, um, uh, I mean, a stamp block that is the size of your. Um, your sentiment because it does make a difference. Now I'm going to pull this up here because I want you all to see what I'm doing and I am going to put this right in the middle hopefully getting it straight that looks good I like that but I think I want to put it a little piece of something behind it just to kind of give it 
a little bit more and you know everything looks good in black so I am going to look and I do have a little scrap of black I have a scrap bin that I um that I always love to put my pieces in and you know what I think I'm going to do I think I'm going to just go ahead and glue this down to here and then I'm going to cut around it so let's use some liquid glue of course I left my top off of my glue so I'm sure it's got clumpy on the top hopefully it'll still flow so I'm just going to put oh yeah we're good I'm going to put this right about there. And then I'm just going to take my scissors and I am going to cut. Oh, my phone is loud. I need to turn that volume down. I'm just going to come across here like so and up like this and there that's all I wanted I just wanted something to kind of frame this so that it wouldn't look like it was getting lost on there and we're going to pop this up as well And then I am going to nestle this. Hmm. What if we put it right there? I like that. I like it there better than over here. It just looked a little too crowded right there. So we're going to put that right, right there. I think that'll work really well. So now we're ready to glue this down to our mat. So I'm going to bring my card base and my mat. And let's go ahead and put the cap on that or I'm going to have a mess. Let's go ahead and I'm going to crease my or score my card. So four and one fourth. And give that a fold. So I'm just going to this down give it a nice crease and then we're going to need to let's go ahead and adhere this to this first I'm not going to add any more dimension to this because oops oh you know what I made this too big all right we're going to regroup let me okay everybody I'm back and I, I was able to make this work let me tell you what I'm going to do because this was a mistake on my part. When you cut your this piece, I'm going to put the correct measurements in the um, uh, description because this card is going to call with the, with the fact that I forgot to cut this top piece down. You, I will have to make an envelope for this. It will not fit in a, in a standard envelope, but that's okay. I don't mind doing that. Um, but this was supposed to be an A2 size card, and now it's just a hair bigger. But um, I did cut a piece of uh, crumb cake that will accommodate my two mats. So I'm still getting the same effect that I wanted. Um, I'm just doing it a little bit different and, and a little bit, just a hair of a larger scale. But I will definitely put the measurements in the uh, description and on my blog that will reflect uh, exactly what I was trying to do. So this needs to be scored at four... And a quarter, is that right? Let's see. This piece is oh this piece is nine and a quarter. Hmm, did I measure that right? All 
Alright, I measured this piece to be five and seven eighths, and it should it should be by four and eight and a half. So let's let's see if we can trim this back down because I don't think this is eight and a half. It looks like it's longer. So eight and a half. Yeah. Because that's four and a quarter, I mean four and an eight, and four and an eighth would be eight and a quarter. So it needs to be eight and a quarter. No, and then a quarter inch more. Eight and a half. We're going to do it at eight and a half and see what we have. We can always cut it back down. And then we're going to score it at four and one fourth. Can that be right? Let's get this cut plate down out of our way. Four and a quarter. I'm double checking everything because I just want to I want this to work. <laughs> so there we go. There is our card. And this will nestle on here. Perfect. Alright. And like I said, I will definitely have all of the correct measurements. And all of this came from this piece right here because this is our top piece that kind of um, dictates everything going below it. So had I caught this before I glued my pieces down, I could have very easily cut the sides off and made this work. But, hey, what is that thing about hindsight? It's 2020, right? So, you know, sometimes things like this happen, and when it does, just sit down and do the math and cut, cut your piece to make it work. It's not rocket science, it's just some simple fractions, so um, most of us can handle some simple fractions, even I can, and even though we all know numbers are hard, we have a stamp that says that numbers are hard, so there you go. Alright, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go ahead and glue this down first, and I'm just going to use some liquid glue, um, running now. It would just have a little clog where I had left it open. Shame on me. So let's just go ahead and get some glue on here and get this glue down and we will have this card just about done. And I love, love, love the way it's turning out. I think it's so pretty. I love doing the little build-a-scene cards. They're fun. Uh, there is some thought process in it, but you know, it's all good. So we're going to put that one down right about there and we're going to use the same thing. We're going to use some liquid glue because this is going to be hard to put tape runner on or the stamping seal so there we go let's get this nice and even all the way around like that and then I'm just going to kind of squish that down making sure that everything adheres now we need a piece of white to go in for our um, our inside mat. Let me wipe this glue off. And go ahead and put my top back on that. And then I'm going to cut this piece down to four. Let's see. i got to think again because this is larger than our normal card base. So this is five and, five and three-fourths. So we're going to do this at five and a half by four. Five and a half by four. Get four this way. I'm going to go just a little bit bigger and do like four and one sixteenth, just because. By five and five and a half. Take a little bit more off this way. And now we can put this in here 
And I'm not going to stamp a sentiment on the inside. I'm just going to put this in, and then this can be a note card or a, um, you know, you could, you could stamp anything inside of it from happy birthday to get well, um, thinking of you, hopping by to say hi. So it could be any occasion you want it to make. And sometimes we need those kind of generic cards where you can grab a card and write a note inside. And this is what I've been doing since the beginning of the year is trying to encourage you to make up your cards in advance. You know, make up some cards so that when you are needing one to send out, like yesterday, you can just go into your little box or wherever you keep your cards. I had uh, one of my subscribers to ask me, what do I keep my um, cards in? I don't have it over here, but I will show you this. I keep them... Um, I do have some cards in here, but I also have some paper. These are the recent cards that I made. These are my 6x6 six six paper packs. So back here... Um, I have a box over on my table in front of me that I keep my cards in, and I make little tabs uh, to put between them, so birthday, get well, thinking of you, uh, that sort of thing. And that's how I keep my cards, and you can pick up those little boxes at any crafting store. They're actually photo uh, boxes where you, where you can store like the 6x4 um, photos in. And they work really great. And you can catch them on sale sometimes, and they're like $2.50 a piece or something. So anyway, there is our card. I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm going to zoom you in so you can get a better bird's eye view. And, of course, we just left it blank on the inside. I love the way this turned out. I love all my little butterflies and my little kangaroo with her little, her little hoppy in her pouch. And we've got the sun shining. The flowers are blooming. It looks like spring. We've got a beautiful blue sky and green grass. Can y'all tell I'm ready for spring? <laughs> I am so ready for spring. But God bless you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you are a first-time viewer of my channel, or if you've stopped by a few times but just never subscribed, think about it. Please hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything at all to subscribe to my channel. Uh, and it helps me grow my channel so that I can bring more quality videos to all of you. So... Thank you so much, and if anyone would share this video on your Facebook group or whatever, that also helps me grow my channel. It get, it puts it gets me a better status on uh, YouTube. So they look at all of this when they are they look at comments, they look at shares, likes, all of that. So like, share, and uh, comment. Those are so important. And, of course, subscribe. I love you all so much. And as I always say in closing, let everything you do and say bring glory to our Father in Heaven. He is so worthy. I love you all. And until next time, bye-bye.